Hey guys, how's it going? So today I want to do a slight follow-up to my video about building Emacs from source. So one of the really big updates in Emacs 28 and now in 29 um, is that you can natively compile Emacs Lisp. Uh, the way you do that, if we hop over to this package, uh, if we go into configure, you have to configure with native compilation. Um, okay, apparently my uh, cursor color is terrible for this, but hopefully you can see where my cursor is. Um, we need to reconfigure Emacs. So basically, I'm just going to update my Emacs. I've already run git pull, so I've got that up to date. Uh, then I'm just going to reconfigure. So I'll do dot slash configure with native compilation. However, to actually get this native compilation support, we do need to install this package from the AUR. So this video is going to double as just a really brief tutorial on installing software from the AUR on an Arch distro. So uh, first of all, we need this library. Uh, it's only available in the AUR. So I'm going to go ahead and hop into my packages directory. And I'm just going to go ahead and get clone it uh, straight into here. So get clone. This shouldn't take too long. And now all we need to do is hop. Oh, You'll see that all we have in here is this pkg build uh, file. And uh, what we need to do to build the package is to run make package, and then we can give it the s and the i flags. So if we check the man page for make package, uh, we'll see that the, the s flag does sync dependencies. So this will allow Pacman to take care of any dependencies that we're missing when we install this package. And then I actually says to install the package after it builds successfully. However, what you should do when you're installing an AUR package is first actually read this package build, as I started to do before discussing make package. So we just want to take a quick look through here, uh, make sure everything looks reasonable, uh, because this is basically just a shell script that's going to be evaluated on our system. Now, this is a pretty popular package. You can see it has 28 votes. Um, I don't think it has any problems reported. It is. It has been flagged out of date for uh, a couple months now, but that should be okay. And you probably want to just browse through the comments, make sure nobody's saying that this deleted all my files or something like that. And once you've done that, you should actually take a look at the package build itself. So we've got the name, the version, um, something, some description, the architecture. The big things I usually look for are the source. So you want to make sure that this looks like a reasonable source location. So sourceware.org. Uh, I've been checking that out. That's I think it's run by like Red Hat or something. Um, and it hosts the, I think all the code for GCC. So we're just going to be grabbing GCC, this package version. Um, we've got these valid uh, PGP keys. This guy's from Arch Linux. That sounds pretty uh, comforting. Got to check some. I think this means it's going to skip checking the sum. That might not be good. But anyway, it's probably okay. Let's see if anybody mentions that in the comments. Skip. variables, these items are checksums that we use to verify the integrity of the files. Hmm. Let's try taking out skip and see what happens. Uh, doesn't seem to like this. Okay, there we go. We're going to try not skipping checking the sums. Um, and then everything else looks fine. So we're going to make the source directory, or go into the source directory. Um, we're fixing some stuff, so do not run fix includes. They're just doing a quick replace on uh, the make file. We are going to install. This is probably, these said instructions are probably why the skip is here. Because this checksum is probably on the files before we make these changes. So I'm probably going to have to take this out, but we'll take a look just in case. We'll try it like this. 
Okay, we're going to change where we installed this. GCC config. This says hack, some configure tests. So we're going to skip some tests that uh, don't work, I think. And then this is the big thing make dir cd into it, set some c flags, um, and then run configure and make package dester package git install con. So this all looks good. Um, to be honest, this is probably a little bit more in depth than I check things usually on my own, but it's always a good idea to do a check like this because anybody can upload stuff to the AUR. This is a pretty popular package, as I was saying, um, but I'm just trying to show some good practices for using the AUR. Let's save and quit that, and let's see if we can get this to build. Okay, so you can see here it is actually um, installing some dependencies. This is going to take a little while eventually, um, and I'll have to pause the video, but um, at this part, I think everything's still going well. Yeah. Integrity checks different size from source. Okay, that's what I figured. So I guess we do have to, we do have to skip this. Which is not ideal, but hopefully these guys know what they're doing. Take that back out and just try to run it again. Oh no, unknown public key. something up. <laughs> Let's take a quick look at the what the package build is supposed to look like. Skip. Uh, okay. I don't think this white space should have any should do anything here, but let's try that again. I didn't have any problems with this over the weekend when I installed it on my other machine. All right, let's go ahead and. I'm just going to start over. Okay. I may need to update my PGP keys. Okay, that all looks good to me. I'll give this one more try and then I may have to pause the video and do some research. find out what's going on. Okay, so it looks like we're just going to have to import this key. Um, I realized that I was using Paru, an AUR helper, on my other system, and it must have taken care of this for me. So as we see here, um, it looks like I need to do gpg receive keys. Oh, I wonder if that's an abbreviation. Receive keys. And then I'll try pasting this in. We need the full key. Okay, so I imported this key. And let's try making the package again. I think there's a second step we may need to take after receiving the key. Okay, so it looks like we're off to the races. I, if I remember correctly from the weekend, I think this does take a while, so I'll go ahead and pause the recording again. I just wanted to update you guys on the GPG keys. Okay, it's still running, but uh, I did just figure out uh, one mistake I made here. Um, so apparently this skip, the error we got was actually because 
uh, not because the checksums didn't match. As the error said, it was just a difference in the length of the source and the uh, checksum arrays. I didn't. I failed to notice this comma dot sig expansion here. So this is actually going to evaluate to two files: the tar dot xz by itself, and then tar dot xz uh, dot sig. And so we're skipping the checksum on the sig. Uh, presumably because it is what contains the checksum for the other piece. So I just wanted to point that out. Uh, this package build uh, arch wiki page seems very helpful. I was actually thinking about putting together a package build myself for Emacs. Uh, I'm pretty confident that Emacs yeah, 29 is already packaged in the AUR. Um, let's see. Maybe it's not. Yeah, Emacs git, I bet, is the package we're looking for. Ah, here's, uh, yeah, Emacs, native comp. Here we go. Who maintains this? Cool. So if you don't want to go to the trouble of building this yourself for Emacs, you can uh, go ahead and do this. You can take this package from the AUR. Okay, well anyway, we're back to waiting. Uh, the last step of the video is just going to be reconfiguring my Emacs and starting make, and then I will uh, end the recording. So thank you guys for watching, be right back. Okay, hello everybody. Uh, we're back. That took about 40 minutes actually, uh, so quite a while. But everything should be good. Yep, our make package finally finished. So with that in mind, I should be able to hop up to my Emacs package. Uh, and now I can run configure with uh, native compilation. Let's just make sure that that actually goes smoothly. This shouldn't take too long. Actually, while I was waiting, I finally uploaded my uh, first video in what I'm going to call the Emacs from Source series. I should have called when we actually built Emacs from Source Part Zero, uh, but today I, I decided not to change the title on YouTube, so it still says just building Emacs from Source. But this one's going to be called the one I just uploaded is called Emacs from Source Part One, where I install Use Package and Evil Mode. Okay, great. It looks like everything went well. Now I think this make will take a while because I think it's going to start natively compiling some of them. Otherwise it'll start doing that when I actually open Emacs um, and that will take a while because I have a lot of Emacs packages. Um, fortunately it, it does compile them in the background. Now the way I noticed it working on my laptop over the weekend is that my laptop got very hot in my lap so it was compiling all the packages in the background while I was using Emacs normally. Um, so probably if you don't have a laptop, you may not even notice that it's going on. But I've already noticed some speed improvements, um, and I'm really excited to have it here on my desktop as well. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this make loose, and I will see you guys next time. The next video will probably be, I think I'm going to actually install DWM blocks on inside the VM. So just to give us um, time, uh, most of the time, and we may actually we may put some resource user stuff in there just for uh, fun as well. But uh, other than that, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.